What's up everybody, it's Joe here with Joseph Blake Photography and in today's video we're gonna be talking about the fact that Apple has announced Final Cut Pro 11. Finally, they've dialed it up to 11 and now everything is gonna go back to the way that it was when Final Cut was the best piece of software for editing and we have all the features that we want and everything is great again. No, none of that happened. But we did get Magnetic Mask, uh, which is cool, so I wanna show that to you. So we're in Final Cut 11, I've updated my library, and now I am going to bring in a clip. I've got a new project, it is a 24 frame per second 4K um, project, nothing crazy, not an HDR, we're just doing a regular Rec. 709 project. And I'm gonna, but I, I wanna try something hard. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of footage that I shot a couple of years ago on a trip to the Alabama Hills. Okay, so now I've got my clip, and I mentioned that this is a hard one because really the color of the ridge that I'm on and the color of the other side of the valley are very similar. There's not a lot that's gonna differentiate these, but as the drone moves through, these different areas become very clearly separated. So the question is, can their AI do it? I'm just gonna scrub to where in this footage I think I'm standing. Okay, that looks like a good start. I'm gonna set that as my endpoint, and then I'm gonna go to about where I stopped flying the drone. I'm gonna set my out point, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and there is our clip, okay? And that's it, right? It's as simple as that, um, but sometimes simple things are very hard. Uh, I'm gonna come to a good spot where I feel like, uh, right here, where I feel like we would be able to kind of really get an idea for what this looks like. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click here and hit add magnetic mask. Now I'm doing that from that little drop down here, uh, but another way that you can do that uh, is by going into the filters panel and going to all and just looking at, or looking for rather, magnetic mask. And there it is right there, with all the colorful stuff. And we're just gonna go ahead and drop it in there. And then there we go. And then you can also see it up in the effects panel, right? So we have a magnetic mask. Okay, now what we're gonna do is up here, we've got our controls for magnetic mask and these controls will become active once we've actually established it. And then we've got plus and minus buttons. The plus means that you wanna add something to the mask and the minus means you wanna remove it. So as you're adding, uh, you, it might kind of assume you mean one thing and it's gonna pull it out, but we're gonna use the plus and we're gonna add a few things. So the first thing we're gonna add is me. So that's it got me pretty good there. Then that section of the rocks there, and this section here, and here, and here. And honestly, right off the bat, that's pretty good. I can see down in here that it has definitely picked up some areas that are not what I want. So I'm just gonna do a subtraction here, and here, and here, and here and right in here. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And we're gonna take a closer look at what it's doing around me. Honestly, I, I don't think I'm gonna squabble uh, there. That, I can actually get in between my legs. That's pretty cool, okay. This is a quick shot, so I'm, I'm not super worried about it. And then we wanna add this rock back, okay. So now going over this ridge, I think we're in pretty good shape. But again, this is a pretty fast moving shot. So as it analyzes back and forth, I mean, my hope is that it will be able to figure that out. So we're gonna just, we're gonna hit analyze. It's gonna go forward um, and then it's gonna go back. And while this is going, and this is going relatively quick, I am running a M1 Max CPU with 10 cores, I think. Um, so obviously your mileage may vary, but if you're looking to compare performance, uh, that's what I have, an M1 Max. So it analyzed it, and now again, let's kind of take a look at the timeline and see what it did. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> that, that did really well. And the, the one thing that it figured out was that once it goes out of frame, it's gone. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. 
<laughs> I've done this a couple of times. This is the first time I've done it on this clip. Um, I wanted you all to see it in, in action here. All right, so now we have a mask and it's looking pretty good. So now let's throw some text on this uh, layer. Actually, what I wanna throw on here is just my channel logo. And I want the channel logo to become visible as the ridge recedes from view. So what I'm gonna do back over here is I'm going to turn off uh, this little enable or disable on-screen controls because I'm done, right? And so now, as you can see, what it has done is effectively given me the part that I scoped and it has then created uh, a, a transparency uh, around that. Uh, and so now what I wanna do is I actually wanna take this clip and duplicate it, but without the, um, without the magnetic mask, right? And so now basically what I have is the same clip just on top of itself. So we're kind of making a sandwich here, but I want my logo to be in between. And so you can see if I just make my logo the whole length of the clip here. I mean, that works pretty well, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go and throw a LUT on here for both of these clips. So now we got our Rec 709 LUT from DJI and yeah, um, I've actually already used this effect on the video that I did for the DJI firmware. If you notice right in the intro, I did a little flippy flip into the action camera screen to do the transition. Um, I used magnetic mask for that, but that was really simple. That was just a square. This is a lot, this is pretty cool. Um, rotoscoping is hard and getting this type of work, especially when you're looking at coloring, like doing um, any sort of color adjustments for subjects, that sort of thing. Masks for that type of thing is, is important and, and tough in some cases, depending on the subject, depending on the situation. And this seems to make this pretty easy. So this is definitely a win in the final cut column because to my knowledge, Resolve, Resolve 19 doesn't do this unless you have the full like studio version, the, the high-end version. And Premiere doesn't do this that I'm aware of. It's been a while since I've jumped into After Effects. So let me know down in the comments. If you're an Adobe user, I use Premiere a lot. I know it's not in there, but I've never seen it. But I haven't been in After Effects in a while. So let me know if this kind of AI driven auto rotoscoping feature is there. And there were some other announced feature updates for version 11 of Final Cut Pro. I don't wanna make it sound like there wasn't anything else. We got captions, but they announced that there would be like AI driven effects and stuff. And I don't see any of that. None of that has come yet but I'm assuming that we'll be seeing it as they continue to roll out Apple Intelligence because they seem to be kind of bundling these features in with Apple Intelligence. So we'll see, who knows? But let me know down in the comments if this matters to you. Are you even a Final Cut Pro user? I hope so, if you're watching this video. Uh, does this keep you in the Final Cut world? I can tell you that I am continuously round tripping into Premiere in order to do text edits. Um, I was using a piece of software called Descript before, but I really, I hate paying like 30 or $40 a month to be limited in how big my files can be. And it's a whole process when I already pay for Adobe Premiere. And so I, I'm just, I'm using the text edit feature to remove word gaps and fillers. And then I'm exporting that into XML. I'm opening it in DaVinci Resolve and then exporting that into Final Cut Pro XML so that I can then edit it in Final Cut. Um, tell I'm doing all my videos right now and it sucks. Uh, I think I just need to buy one of those Final Cut Pro 7 to Final Cut Pro X uh, editors or, or um, converters on the App Store. I don't know. But if you know how to solve my problem, let me know down in the comments because when I'm doing talking head videos and I need to edit them, that's, that's how I'm doing it. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Anyway, 
If this is the type of stuff that you're into, you should hit subscribe. Uh, and if this was informative to you, go and hit the like button. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. I'm gonna keep playing with this.